Hello. Today we are talking about variables. This is a more in-depth discussion uh, from the language tour section of the Dart documentation. Um, we have other videos on the basics of variables from the, um, I think it was the, like the language samples. Okay, but this goes into more in depth. Um, I've got the language spec, the official one pulled up here, if we need it. And also, I can open the TriDart in a new pro, uh, tab over here. So we can test this stuff out. Um, so whether you're coming into this video as a first time, or you've watched some of the other more basic videos, um, we're going through the documentation um, in an attempt that if you were to read this documentation yourself, it's nice to have somebody annotate it alongside you uh, and hear their perspective as well. And so that's what we're providing. Okay, so we'll read through, we'll test it out and see what we can learn. So here is an example of creating a variable and initializing it. So the creation is var name. Okay, so that by itself is creating a variable. Hello. There we go. Okay, so what we can do is we have our main program there. So we can just initialize a variable there. We could print that variable uh, because this main because it's all in the same sort of like context or file. Uh, it knows about that variable name. Um, so then, yeah, this is just a uh, a message. It's not really an error name hasn't been assigned any value, so it's not printing printing anything over here. Um, that was interesting. Null. Okay. Cool. So name is null. Uh, is what it sounds like if you don't initialize it. But we've said um, it's a name. Now, a name could be a number, it could be a string, it could be a, a list of values. Um, we just haven't said yet. Okay. So that's creating and then initializing it. We wanted to assign it a value, so at the time it's created, it is initialized given its first value. Now when we run this, it should print Bob instead of null. And for some reason, that is not <laughs> showing the right um, sort of uh, CSS for the font color. It's interesting. Okay. Yeah, that's really strange. I wonder why that is. Huh. Is it like dark mode turned on or something? No idea. Okay. Well, we'll roll with it and see what happens. Okay. So that's, uh, at its basic level, that's a variable. A variable in programming is something that holds information um, so that you can use it in other places. Um, okay, it's like a bucket if you think about it that way. Variables store references, so it's referring to the name Bob in this in this case. Um, the variable called name contains a reference to a string object. Okay, so this this denotes that this is a data type of of type string, um, and the value itself is Bob. Uh, the type of the name variable is inferred to be string, okay, but you can change that type by specifying. Um, so earlier we had var, that's a way to say, hey, I'm creating a variable, but uh, I'm not going to tell you what the type is. You have to infer it from the assignment, from, uh, the, ver from the, uh, the value that we're referring to. Uh, we could, if we wanted to, we could change that. So let's go back up here and say, instead of var, we can say string name equals bob. Okay. Oh, we're still printing hello world. But we can print our name. Okay, and there's bob <laughs> in, in dark text. Okay. So let's come back over here to the documentation. Okay. 
Okay, so you can change the type by specifying it. If an object isn't restricted to a single type, specify the object type or dynamic if necessary. Um, let's, let's break this down one by one. Um, let's say we didn't know it was going to be a string, um, but we knew it was going to be something. So for example, like I think in, um, in Dart, you have like an object that's like the top level um, class or object type, if you will. And then so like a string inherits from object, maybe you have number, which in turn you can have an int, or maybe you can have a double, these types of things. So there's a hierarchy of data types. Um, so we could also say Bob is a string, but more generally, Bob is an object. More specifically, Bob is a string, but more generally, Bob is an object. Um, and I believe this will work as well. And we'll highlight it. Okay, it prints Bob again. Okay. Now this, um, so we're not restricting it. So in that sense, like our name could just be a number, 42. Okay, so now when we print name, name refers to 42, which is also an object in addition to being more specifically an integer. Okay, it's running, it's running, it's running. Okay, it should have printed that. Yep, 42. Um, so you can specify the object type. Um, so you can change the type, you know, if it's inheriting from object, whether it's a string integer or whatever. Now this dynamic bit is a little, um, from what I understand, don't really want to use dynamic. Um, if you can help it, because so it basically turn, turns off the type checking, um, and you can just, it's kind of like the Wild West, um, uncharted territory. Um, you really need to know what you're doing if you use dynamic, so stay away from it until you absolutely know that you need to use it. That's the easiest thing. The fewer decisions you have to make in programming, the better. Okay. Cool, so we did that. We had like our, our object class. Um, and then it says another option is to explicitly declare the type that would be uh, that would be inferred. So we would be inferring Bob if we used var, but we're going to explicitly declare the type. So string is more specific than object. Both, both are explicitly typed in that um, object and string are types. Um, but one is more specific than the other. Okay. So this says, this page follows the style guide recommendation of using var rather than type annotations for local variables. Let's take a glance over there and see where that takes us. Okay, so it takes us to this types um, ID on the page. Okay, so we're somewhere in the middle of this big document. Um, and I'm not going to just read through this, but I'll, I'll, I'll skim and, and show you. Um, so for example, instead of calling something a list, they called it a var here. Um, so there's a, a list, uh, you've got these numbers uh, that make up this, this variable called lists. Uh, okay, type inference. So it goes into more detail here. Yeah, they don't really talk about. Okay. Okay. This this is a good a good point here. So inside this if else if conditional logic, you could. Um, you could sign, well, they're not even showing it here. Okay. Yeah. So here's what they're doing. I would have showed this first. Let's look at this one first on the bottom. This is a bad example. So because parameters, this parameters variable, isn't local to this if logic, uh, they're saying don't use var here 
because it's more of a top level. Uh, it's more global, and it's, it's not really global, but it's like <laughs> it's more global out here than it would be if it were declared in here inside the if block. Um, so you don't want to use var on the outside of something, um, but you do want to be more explicit um, whenever that variable is declared outside uh, of uh, a more specific scope. I think that's about as deep as I want to get into that right now. Uh, let's go back and not, not get too much on a tangent. Okay, so that's the introduction to the variables quickly. Um, this next part is a default value. Let me see if I have enough time for that. Yeah, I might be able to squeeze this in. So uninitialized variables, remember we, we did that early earlier, uninitialized, meaning they're declared but not assigned a value. Uninitialized variables that have a nullable type have an initial value of null. Now what is a nullable type? I guess that's like, that's a data type that can either, so, so for example, let's say string, can, is string a nullable type? Um, if I say I'm returning a string, does it have to be a string? Or can, can I declare it to be a string, but not initialize it, so it's effectively null until in the future it gets some value. So for example, I'm going to say that name uh, is a string, but I'm not going to assign it something. So is it a nullable type? Now you see, I immediately get an error. These are good things to do, is like test out um, these scenarios in your mind and try them out. So the non-nullable variable name must be initialized. So, so this data type, string, just as it is, capital S, uh, string, no question marks, no bangs, it's non-nullable. It must be initialized. We got an error, okay? If we run it, we're probably gonna get a bunch of red text here, or black text, yeah, red text, okay. At least that, we can read that. All right, so uninitialized variables that have a nullable type have an initial value of null. Okay, a string obviously is not a nullable type because it threw us an error, okay? All right, if you haven't opted into null safety, then every variable has a nullable type. So maybe the version of Dart we're on has this thing called null safety. So it's it's a more um, uh, the compiled program is going to give us better warnings and maybe just keep us more safe, keep our program more intact and and predictable. Okay. Let's see. I think on Dart Pad it will tell us. Yeah. You see how in the, in the bottom right it has this null safety? So I think that is is like turned on right now. I don't know if there's a way to turn it off. Oh, there is, look. So I can turn that off. Do we get the same error? No, look at that, we don't. Um, in this case, when I turn null safety off, we're able to initialize the, the name variable, which has a type string, but we haven't assigned it any values, so it is null. Uh, but newer versions, there's there's null safety is on, and it gives us that error. So that's that's how you want to be uh, programming, is with um, the newest features because they, they provide a lot of value. We just have to adopt them. Okay. Um, even variables with numeric types are initially null because numbers, like everything else in Dart, are objects. So we saw that earlier when I showed the inheritance. Um, okay, let's do this. What is this doing? So we're going to switch to a different kind of example. So there's a new variable called line count instead. Null safety is on. Okay, and I'm able to print that, and I think it prints null specifically because we have this int with a question mark. That means like, hey, line count might be null. So it's not, it's not an int. Uh, that's, a, that's a different data type. Um, they're related, but this is more like, this is the, the nullable int, if you will. Okay, so we're explicitly telling the, the program 
hey, this this might be null. So uh, so heads up. Okay, production code ignores the assert call. During development, on the other hand, assert throws an exception if the condition is false. Okay, I've never used this before. This is kind of cool. Let's see what it does. Can I just run it? No. Do I run it in my program? Maybe we'll do it before we print. Okay. So line count is null. Let me just change it to something. Well, it's on 42 to this, this integer. So now assert should raise an error. And it doesn't. <laughs> Production code ignores it during development. So are we in development mode over here? I thought we would have been. Maybe we're not. Okay. So I don't quite know how to use that just yet in Dartpad. Okay. If you enable null safety, then you must initialize the values of non-nullable variables before you use them. Right. So this, this is non-nullable, so it must be assigned um, when you have null safety turned on. We saw that earlier. You don't have to initialize a local variable when it's declared. Okay, so that means you can do something like this. You don't have to initialize a local variable when it's declared, but you do need to assign a value before it's used. So, if, for example, if we didn't have this middle bit that I just highlighted, we would just be declaring it and then printing it. Um, if we had null safety turned off, or this was a question mark type of integer, then you could print it. Um, so for example, the thing we're doing here, um, line count is non-null by the time it's passed to print. So if we have null safety turned on like this, okay, now null safety's on, it gives us an error because it's like, Hey, you haven't done anything with this. Why don't you try doing something with it? Okay. So let's just, let's do something kind of cheesy. Um, this hasn't been declared, this thing. Let's just say true. Then we're just going to change the number because we also don't have a function called count lines. Let's say it returns five. Okay. So if it's true, do that. Non-nullable variable must be initialized, but you're supposed to know that I'm eventually doing something, right? I was under the impression that that was the case. Dead code, line six. It's never reached. Okay, that's fine. Thanks for helping me out. So must be initialized. So is this about okay. a local variable? I think that's the problem. Okay, so you see how they're like, you don't have to initialize a local variable. So what have I done? My variable is not local to this function. It's effectively more global in a sense. It's, it has more scope. I need to restrict its scope to be local in this little context, this little environment. Okay. All right. And now it assigns the value five. Okay. So don't, don't make that mistake. Um, that's what that means. You don't have to initialize a local variable. So this is kind of like all inside the main program. Okay, 